Good morning, everybody. I'm Bart Winkler. This is our journey into the Winkler verse. Paul Emig is here. Um, and Grant Bills is here. It's our weekly mm -hmm, mm -hmm, brought to you by Two Below Honey. I am back in my dungeon. You can see on the Dan Shaney YouTube stream. Um, we're still dealing with the ramifications for me punching my laptop screen to make it lo no longer uh, efficient. Paul's in his normal uh, homestead. Grant is, is somewhere different. Can you? Could you show? I am. Yeah. Here, let me spin you around. We got some fellow radio people right there, and then we got the ballpark right there. Beautiful American family fields of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Who's next to you, Heller? We should get him on. Should I? Should I ask him to come on into the Winkler verse? <laughs> It'd be like. I'm not even asking him to come on. I'll be like, will you join us in the Winklerverse? <laughs> um, we do have, uh, before we do some questions, your journey is being followed. I'm not sure if you saw this guy running around or not. Uh, Steven Newsman has a report. What? Steven Newsman has a report. He's off the Freeman beat? He's on the Grant Bills beat. Uh... He's uh, here's the that report. Huh? Here, okay, here's okay. such report. Okay. This is Stephen Newsman with another Grant Bills spring training update. Grant Bills arrived in Maryvale this week, and the first thing he did was approach Brewers beat writer Todd Rosiak to inquire as to why the veteran reporter has such an issue with the Craig Council memes. Grant timidly walked up to Mr. Rosiak, offered to shake his hand, but before the Wisco Sports Show host could even say anything, the Brewers scribe said, and I quote, if you say one goddamn word about the Craig Council memes, I'm going to go get Kurt Hogue and have him beat the ever-living shit out of you, you foolish youth, end quote. Grant was so taken aback, wondering perhaps if Mr. Rosiak was just joshing around. But that's when the Journal Sentinel's longtime beat man took out his mobile, searched for Grant Bills on Twitter, and immediately blocked him. That will show you now you can no longer see my tweets, said Rosiak. It was at this moment that Grant Bills realized this work trip was going to be nothing like being at Radio Row. After all, that experience was filled with interactions with top celebrities like Tom Grossi and sure, I suppose, a couple other randos like Bert Kreischer and Jordan Love. No, this spring training trip was bound to be miserable for Grant Bills. Instead of proudly sharing the council means that Grant spent his entire plane ride creating, he now had to decide whether to delete them entirely from his phone or risk being outcast from the entire Brewers beat core. Here's hoping that Grant Bills can find his Steve Avila moment during spring training and find someone to share his council memes with before it's too late. We've got more to come. This is Steven Newsman. Shadow Flow! Wow. Off the Freeman beat, onto the Bills beat, Steven Newsman. Wow. I did, I did introduce myself to Rosiak. Uh, he's very nice. It had nothing to do with the memes, though. I led with an apology for how many times I've asked him to come on assorted shows, uh, which is always a good way to meet someone IRL. It's like, hey, sorry for being the most annoying fucking person to ever text you. Has he ever uh, come on? He came on with Bill. I, I, it was either when Council left or when Murphy became the manager. But Todd, Todd's whole thing was, it's like, well, I like to spread my hits around. And also like, we, we don't pay, like we don't pay get, you know, we, like Clemens is a contributor and Jim Ozarski, but it's not like we pay these people. So I like, I can ask, but for the most part, Rosiak doesn't respond. That's, that's, that's the thing. Todd's um, one of the people I enjoy seeing the most. I love Todd. He was super nice. Why. It's the first yeah, time I, really... he, he left yesterday. Kurt, if he's not already here to take his spot at the ballpark, he should be here anytime. I will be able to share the council memes with Kurt. Rosiak <laughs> might be over him, but Kurt is definitely not over him. <clears throat> are you, That's for sure. Are you refuting por portions of Newsman's report? Newsman knows my week better than I probably do. He could probably tell me some things that I've been up to. I like on Monday, I was here by myself and I'm like, but I was here because I needed the booth space. Like once I have a place where my show works, I don't like move it well i'll do it from home mm -mm. no i'm gonna come here with the internet plug and i'm gonna do it here but it was empty so i'm putting together like a little little documentary for the week so i was just wandering around the park like recording different things in different right field i'm calling it corbin's corner because that spot is where corbin burns did like the angry press conference with all the <laughs> brewers beat reporters i like it so I, I was down in corbin's corner 
I, I kept walking down to the field because I wanted audio of like the lawnmower going by. So the guy on the mower is like, what the fuck is this kid? I'm the only one here and I'm just holding out my phone. <laughs> they just went about their business, which is what I wanted. But I've definitely maximized the time and, and space of the ballpark. Good. We look forward to that. Um, and we thank you for your presence here um, from, wow, an actual real life baseball stadium. That's very. Um, the Winkler verse is large, expansive, very yeah. expansive. Covering like the MC, states. Like the MCU. Exactly, exactly like the MCU, where um, it's not as good as it used to be. But either way, <laughs> also true. It's good to have you, boys. Uh, we're brought to you by Tupelo Honey, downtown Milwaukee, Broadway, and Clyburn. You can check them out across from the public market. They do have um, the spring menu that is going to be rolled out with different sodas, different food option, and just you know feel more like spring. The, the food has to match the weather. Uh, and now with there being no winter, we'll see if this is a different uh, kind of thing. Winter is officially over, not just this year, but possibly forever. Um, so enjoy your snowboarding simulators, which we'll have to do soon. Maybe the guys at Carl's Place can set those up. But there you in go. the meantime, uh, TupeloHoneyCafe.com, make your reservations. And guys, uh, Easter is in March this year, so get your Easter brunch reservations in. I'm still not entirely sure as a Catholic grant why that's the case. Uh, I just remember I have to turn down the PA in here. Give me a sec. What was that, Bart? Why is Easter change? Uh, well, I'm not 100% sure. I believe that it is the first Sunday after the first full moon after the first day of spring. I'm like 80% sure that that's how Easter is decided. I'm not sure the biblical... I'm not sure why. I just think that's I think that's how it works. I had to go to a well, I had to. I, I went to a funeral that was a Catholic mass uh, recently, and I did not participate in the communion. Yeah. Did you cross your arms for the blessing? I didn't even get up and go. You didn't did you sit the whole time? Did you at least stand? Tell me you stood. Well, I stood when they told me to stand. Okay, okay, okay. It's because I didn't yeah. I'm intermittent fasting and I couldn't eat the bread. It would have broken mm. my fast. The the food and wine at church is specifically designed to have minimal nutrition and alcohol in it. That's that's how it's designed. Well, all right. Uh, Paul, what questions do you got for us this uh, week? I'm going to start with one that I stole from a guy named Grant Bills. Grant asked this question. And I said, don't, don't, don't think about this. Don't answer this. I'm stealing this. We're talking about this the next time we talk. Grant proposed, you would accept Caleb Williams is about to have a Hall of Fame career with the Bears if it guaranteed Council never has a winning season with the Cubs. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. That was the exact phrasing that Grant texted to Bart and I. I loved it. I said, just table it. I've, I've thought about it a little bit. I don't know what. Bart's instant response would well actually I know it might I think I responded back I don't respond but I was just like so I'll just start because Grant posed it and I'll say undeniably one thousand percent mm hmm Caleb Williams can go have a Hall of Fame career with the Bears as long as Craig Council absolutely sucks with the Cubs mm hmm great question Bart or Grant well I think that um, you know we haven't really known the bears to be that good much in our lifetime they did meet us in an nfc championship and they did get to a super bowl um but for the most part they've not been good mm -hmm. and so if i had to endure a hall of fame career from a bears quarterback that would be a new terrain that would be years of uh competition that we're just kind of not familiar with we we've seen the cubs kind of the same but with more success uh winning a world series and obviously there was a period where it looked like they were going to win a few more. So we know what it's like. I'm thinking from a fan perspective, getting yeah. bombarded with Chicago people that are all like, ah, fuck you. We come and shit all over your fucking Lake Geneva and, you know, Door County. And then we just leave our condom wrappers all over the hotel rooms and go back home. <laughs> they treat this place like a, like a, like a U.S. hockey team treats a hotel. 
That's like a 14 year old reference. Very hmm. specific. Um, uh, Tim will edit that out in post. It's just not current enough. <laughs> so I, I think that it's about who do I less want to hear from? Because mm-hmm. Bears fans, if they get a quarterback, okay, welcome to the club. We, we've we had a quarterback. Right. If Council wins with them, that means he's not winning with us. And there's the, the biggest thing that really upset me over this last three months or whatever is I think that us talking about council is an us thing. That's, that's, that's a conversation happening in our home, the Brewers fans homes Mm -hmm. and the Cubs fans are the neighbor and they hear the conversation. And instead of just like talking to themselves, like, Oh, do you hear what's happening next door? They're going through it, man. They then knock on our window, come into our house and say, stop it. You don't get over it. You they're like, like, this is our thing. We're dealing with this. We had this guy who said he's Mr. Brewer who, who left us. And, and you guys are telling us to shut up. Like there were some council memes that then they found and they're like, Oh, Oh, misbehaving of a fan base. I mean, what is this high and mighty act from the fucking Chicago Cubs fans who go by the names, lovable losers and bleacher bums. And like, they don't just say that because it's cute. They say it because, they play during the day a lot and they're able to fill up a stadium, just get fucking trashed with no regard for the actual result of the game. So stay out of our house. You deal with your own thing. And for that reason, I hope that they suffer. So yeah, the bears, the Caleb Williams can, they can go one, they can go back to back to back Hall of Fame quarterbacks for all I care. If, if council, if if council never has any success there, and I'm talking like losing seasons. Oh, yeah. What a joy it will be. And and not just because mm-hmm. of the Cubs fans, but also because I want to see Council fail. I want to see this miserable fuck mm-hmm. who not only mm-hmm. left our house to go to the neighbor's house, like, oh, he's having an affair with the neighbor. Ooh, he's keeping it secret. No, he's not. He's opening the window. <laughs> Making sure we see. By the way, Bart is doing a humping. Uh, yeah. So screw them all. Mine. Screw them all. I'm I love it. What a great response. Grant, it was your question. I'm assuming, well, I don't want to assume anything. So let me reframe your own question to you. You'd accept Caleb, Caleb Williams is about to have a Hall of Fame career with the Bears if a guaranteed council never has a winning season with the Cubs? Mm-hmm or mm-mm? Well, sometimes you don't know how great you have it until you don't have it that great anymore. So I've always in my life just assumed that we could beat the shit out of the Bears. I can bank on that, right? And it's become normal. I, I don't really know what it would be like to not have that be normal. So I, I I don't know. We could go down this hypothetical path and then, you know, half a mile down this path, I could be like, actually, this is, I, I didn't foresee this. I, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have fathomed this before starting on this, this journey. But Bart's right. If we're just counting rings or we're just keeping score here, the Packers have such a long lead on the Bears in terms of high-level quarterback play and wins, where yeah. if the Bears got an amazing quarterback and Jordan Love and Caleb Williams were to go back to back, and maybe the Bears win more games than the Packers, but it's still not like night and day difference. Like I, I think that would be fine. And Packers fans could still say, okay, yeah, now get another one. Now get another one. We would still have cards to play. Yeah. Whereas if Council goes to Chicago and, and they go on deep playoff runs, I think I might just not want to be a sports fan anymore. You know, like, I don't know what card I play other than to blast more Craig Council memes on Brewers Twitter. And another thing, Bart, and you hit on this. I appreciate it. I don't want to be lectured by Cubs fans. The Cubs and the Brewers historically are the same shitty teams. The Cubs have money. They choose not to spend it. The Brewers don't have money. The Cubs won their little poverty World Series in 2016, and the Brewers failed to win theirs in 1982. That's like the one difference, really, between these two teams. So if Cardinals fans want to lecture me, like, how dare you? throw mud on your you know your hometown boy with memes it's like okay all right fine like also brewers fans aren't demanding respect here i see all these replies from cubs fans it's like and brewers fans want to be taken seriously and we're all like no one ever has said that in brewers fandom like yeah. we don't want your respect and also we've never said we're over it i see that from cubs fans all the time it's like oh and brewers fans say they're over it no mm-mm. no one has said that 
This is just starting. They were this telling us to get beginning. over it the day it happened. It's like I I haven't even wrapped my arms around what I need to get over. Like I, yeah. you know, we always do the the five stages of grief thing. By the way, I think I'm going to go to Council's first game back at American. I think I have to be in that game in a just fan a capacity or media capacity. In a fan, well, no, I'll cover the game from a fan perspective. That's ah, I'm cool. always if I'm at a game, yeah. I'm covering the game. It just depends on my perspective. That's how. Sure. I, for example, I covered a Badger game two weeks ago from a fan perspective. I kind of want to rock with Brett and Tosa, but I also like. I was about to bring be, that up. I, I also wouldn't be shocked if we got like two innings into the game and I'm like, fuck, I'm kind of uncomfortable because I love Brett, but I don't know what he's going to do and what he's going to yell at this game. Like I'll boo when he's intro and like boo. When, anytime there's a natural opportunity to boo, I'm taking it. But like, I feel like Brett because he lo- this is so personal to him and it's so personal to a lot of Brewers fans, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Especially those that live in, in the area directly around Milwaukee, where I, I wouldn't say fandom is stronger there, but it's more, it's, it's part of the community as Mark Atanasio said. So I need to be at that game. I, I don't know to circle back all the way to the beginning. I think I would lock in Caleb Williams hall of famer. If it guaranteed, not just that Craig council and the Cubs never won a world series, never had a winning season. Yeah, I don't want this to be a catastrophe. Yeah. If I'm giving up the Packers' dominance over the Bears, I need this to be a nightmare for the Cubs. Like, I'm not taking some wild card appearances and split. No, no, no. It needs to be a catastrophe if I'm making this deal. Yeah. I agree. Um, I just think that, like, Cubs fans are coming from this position of – I mean, the only way they can look down on Brewers fans is in numbers. There's more of them. There's just more of them. And so, yeah, they can bully us easier, but you're not any better than Brewers fans. Mm-mm. In fact, I would argue that you're worse. I would argue that if in 2003 there was a man who tried to catch a foul ball and it led to, then the Brewers ended up losing, like we would – we would ironically turn that guy into like the coolest dude ever. Oof. And he would throw out the first pitch and he'd, he'd be like, on the walk of fame. Yeah. He would be a, he would be a part of the lore. He'd be like, Oh, fucking, I saw Bartman down at dugout 54. I got fucking hammered with him. He's the best. Instead these Cubs fans lead him into exile and he can't even live his life because he tried to, he tried to catch a ball in foul territory, which is, I mean, how many, like, they, they should do, fans should fill out a questionnaire when they bring a glove into the stadium. Now, you got to be, you got to be aware that if uh, there's a, even a play remotely uh, that, that could affect the game, you got, you got to put that glove down. Like, you're, you're bringing a glove for a reason. Or if a ball comes at you, you're naturally just like, you don't just be like, uh, doink. <laughs> so I, I think, I think Steve Bartman would be a hero. Well, I recently heard you talking about like dream interviews and the chances that you might one day interview an alien that has come down from outer space. If you can get Bartman on the Bart Winkler show, that needs to be the new dream interview. Yeah, but I have no interest in talking to that guy. But I thought you wanted to like, even as a non-Cubs guy, I thought you wanted him to like, Help him alleviate the burden that he probably assumes. I'd rather do that by talking to Moises Alou and being like, so you like ruined this guy's life. You. The Cubs fans followed you <laughs> and your freak out. How do you, do you live with the burden? This guy can't walk in public. You probably have a nice life. You're retired. You don't even, you probably don't even think about it some days. Every day Steve Bartman wakes up, thinks he has a nightmare of what his life has become and realizes in an instant, that's his life. You did that, sir. <laughs> that is... That would be great. That would be great. Either one. If you can get Bartman. And again, if there was ever a host who could get Bartman, I would think it would be a guy named Bart. Hmm, possibly. That's just an, it's an in, you know, it's a natural. In. I didn't even think about that. Steve Bartman. Yeah. The Bart Bartman interview would make your career. Save your career. Some might say, cause it's Rocky. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, that was a great topic, Grant. Thanks for doing thanks for doing the hard work. Uh, I, I always like those scenarios. It's like what I what I'm bartering with in my own sports teams experiences. Like, would I 
would I accept this if it got me that I always, I think that's yeah. a good exercise that sports fans should do. I do think, and, and I think part of it, I think you guys brought up great points, by the way, of like ones I had not thought of, which is, okay, well, if you have a, if the Bears have a great Hall of Fame quarterback, for, for a Packers fan, you're like, you know, yawn, tell me when there's another one or potentially another two. Like, tell me when this becomes a 40 year trend. And until then, like, good for fucking you. You found one. Like, after 40 years of t- being terrible at this. I didn't think of that angle. For me, it was more of, like, I like the NBA and the NFL as a whole more than I like Major League Baseball. But I find myself most passionately defending of Brewers and anti-Cubs than I am compared to the Bears and compared to... um Geez, the Bulls, obviously, because the Bulls have been relatively. But so, like, so for me, it's like, I'd the Cubs succeeding would is more like oh for me than the Bears succeeding. But again, part of that could be the way I feel about the Brewers. But also, some of it could just be like, yeah, like good for you. You the Bears have a competent team for a while. Like, cool, man. Good, good for you. I'm proud of you. So I think that's interesting. Um, Grant, you are yes, you are on site. So I'm going to start with you on this one. Normally one that I think Bart would yawn at, but I think we just have to get your perspective while you're there. (laughs) As Grant puts on his credential. (laughs) The Brewers pitching staff obviously isn't what it was a couple years ago with Burns, Woodruff, and Peralta lined up one through three, but you're confident this current pitching group is good enough to still win the division. Mm Mm-hmm. Or mm mm-mm. Grant Bills first, please. I I think it can be. Um, I think there's a scenario in which it, it doesn't go well. Like I, I wouldn't guarantee that this rotation can be a division winning rotation. I think the Reds are going to be a lot better this year. Although we've, you know, we say that shit and then it never happens. So yeah. like, I, I don't know. I, well, the Pirates will win Mar- uh, April. The Reds will win May. Yeah. And then who knows? Yeah. The, the Reds, the Reds are a classic. I need to see it. Can I see it? I just like to see it totally. for a month. Let's see it for a month. That's that's the classic Bill Simmons. So I think they absolutely, here's the thing. They have a lot of arms, right? And and Pat Murphy has said multiple times, you know, in the last couple of days, like we're not going to be able to manage this team. Number one starter, number two starter, number three starter. It's going to be very different in the last couple of years. But we also have proof of concept with that. Like we saw this in 2018 when they had a bunch of guys who could get outs in different roles. Yeah. So that actually puts a lot of onus on Pat Murphy. Yeah. To best know how to use these guys. And, and you know, he it's something he's talked endlessly about. Um, where it's like one day we might need a guy to go five innings. One day we might need three. One day we might need six or seven, depending on, you know, who's going and how they're pitching. I think that they're totally good enough because they have a lot of arm, a lot of bandwidth is what Murphy said the other day. They have a wide array of guys. Now, the ceiling on each of those individual guys maybe isn't as high as Corbin Burns was or a healthy Brandon Woodruff. But they, it's, it's not like they have a shortage of arms. I own a shitload of Aaron Ashby stock. I yeah. asked him directly this morning. I said, would you recommend people buy stock in Aaron Ashby? And he <laughs> laughed and basically said, that's the goal. That's what we're going for. And I, wow. nice. I, don't, I don't know if, like, is that a ringing endorsement? I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I really like Aaron Ashby. Dude, people are going nuts over DL Hall. Yeah. Like everyone, everyone in the, all these pitchers, are gathering around his locker. Trevor McGill and Jacob Junis were around his locker yesterday. Like, how do you grip that fastball? Every time he's out throwing in the bullpen, there is there are pitchers, not Brewers fans or coaches. There are other pitchers on the staff that want to get a look at this guy because his fastball moves in a different way. And so I, I think fan perception and fan excitement around DL Hall is much lower than it is within the clubhouse. So I think that's hopefully going to be a positive surprise for Brewers fans. And um I think right now you can lock in Wade when he's healthy, which if you ask him is trending very well for opening day or very close to opening day. DL Hall and Freddie Peralta. The rest of the rotation comes down to Ashby, Junis, Junk, you know, some of these other guys. I I like their options, but it's going to be a lot on Pat Murphy to manage them in a way where they can succeed. Like Council used to do, as much as it pains me to bring that up. Like, But are you saying DL Hall you think is locked into a starter spot? I do, yeah. Wow. And, and others like others like Rosiak said that last week. Interesting, because um, I mean, in, like in the, his podcast with Jr. The question, whenever the Burns trade happened a month and a half ago, was reliever or starter. And I know the Brewers were like starter, and Deal Hall, if I recall correctly, said, "Oh yeah, the, like when he was first traded, yeah, the Brewers talked to me about starting, but I didn't quite realize it was like, oh yeah, he's one of the three locks for a starting spot. So that's that seems big. 
I think the Brewers in acquiring him in that trade kind of showed their hand a little bit. Yeah. Like, I, I don't I don't know if that's the trade if they don't think at least with a lot of confidence that he can start. Maybe they get two months into the season and decide that's not the best course of action, but that's yeah. certainly the starting point as much more connected, much smarter Brewers people have said already. Well, and don't forget too, like how miserably bad Corbin Burns was in his first full year in the major leagues. Like, and like, and if there's things I think a Brewers fan can trust the Brewers to do, it's for me, it's two things. One is to take a toolsy pitcher and develop him in their lab check with the L hall, right? Am I saying that you can't give me a look there, Grant, that made me wonder if you no, you said, you said toolsy and Bart reacted. So I was oh, reacting to Bart's no, reaction. Toolsy. No, and I was having also, an internet issue. Of course. Oh, okay. Oh, and see. then the second, the second thing I would say is taking a bad defensive catcher and making him at least a serviceable defensive catcher, if not a very good defensive catcher. Like these are the two things the brewers consistently do. So, um, yeah. So wait, go, so, uh, Bart, before I kick it to you real quick, Grant, you got to, I know this is not going to be a typical year. You said that about Pat Murphy right now, the one through five, the opening week of starters in the end of March, early April will be in your projection. Oh, uh, I would say Freddie DL hall, Wade Miley. Who am I forgetting? I'm going to forget someone really important. I think Junis is probably in there Yeah, right probably. now. Yeah. I would like to believe that Ashby is in there. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100 percent sure. Those would probably be my those would probably be my five. Colin Ray. Colin Ray's in there too. That's what I'm forgetting. Hit my dumb ass. He's literally on the mound right there. Uh Pat Murphy really he talked about Colin, not just keep bringing this up, but I'm here. So it'd be stupid to not reference yeah. these things that I'm hearing and seeing. Like Pat Murphy this morning is talking about all the innings. I think it was like 125, 126 innings that Ray ate last year. He thinks he can be better. He just gave up a double down the line. So it's uh poor ah, timing. He's two, two runs. Two runs are going to score because Yelich ain't getting this ball back in in time. Uh, yeah, they're both going to score. Hey, you know but, what? Tim, if you could, if you could edit the highlight over Grant saying it, that'd be good for the YouTube too. Uh, thank you, Tim. We'll make it into a short. Uh, yeah. But Colin Ray, very Murphy talks a lot about his players' personality. I think that's interesting. He's like mm. he's calm, cool, and collected, Mister Relaxed, and that kind of fits his role on this team. And talked a lot about how he bonded with Woodruff and Wade Miley last year. Mm. Uh, and really kind of found himself. I think he's firmly a member of this rotation too. That was the one I'm forgetting, and he's the one who's literally right in front. Yeah, of but him. then he gave up that double down the line. That's a that's bad. You know, that's just it bad. Was, grooms Grooms scored a triple. I heard on the intercom. I thought I thought Yelich kicked it around in the corner, but it's spring. You know, throw the throw the kid a bone. Gr Why Grooms not? the official score. That's what the scorecard says. Let me check. Oh, again. Wow. Okay. Wow. My old colleague. Okay. Uh, Bart. You are not boots on the ground. You may have less insight from day-to-day -day conversations with Pat Murphy, but you're confident this Brewers pitching staff can be good enough to still win the division? Mm-hmm or mm-mm? Um, yes, but I think mm -hmm, but I think my um, level of, like, I don't know, um, anticipation or... I just I don't think about the pitching staff too much. You kind of take it for maybe granted or assumption. I think when that... we're thinking of the Brewers, we're thinking of okay, Yelich, Adamas, Churio's up, Reese Hoskins. We're thinking of these guys. Sure. And then the pitching staff is what we were thinking about when the offense was bad. But I think the offense is better. And then the pitching staff, there's just so many questions uh that I think will work themselves out. I don't know that we have like a one, two punch or even a one, two, I mean, we're not going to have a one, two, three punch like Burns and uh, Peralta and Woody. But then like with Corbin Burns, I don't, I didn't have the visceral reaction that a lot of people did to that trade. And it came after the Reese Hoskins deal. So maybe people thought, Oh, world series. Yeah. They yeah. take Corbin Burns and we're like, worst team in baseball. It just, it was a re real weird pendulum swing. Yeah. Also, I think people were kind of going through it with the Bucks at that time, so everything seemed like it was piling on. Corbin Burns last year was a uh, he was worth three and a half wins. His wins above replacement was three and a half. Look at you! I, this is great. Year before, well, that's the one new stat I like. I think it actually oh, tells you something. That a boy. 
keep I'm going. Like these, these other bullshit. It, it helps, by the way, that war is like a super easy, small, round number. Like yeah. it's not like a decimal point percentage. Like oh, three war. Like I can, my dumbass can work with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's sound. It's like, what's his fucking war, man? What's his war? Not what's his bat pip. <laughs> Um, it's it's babe it, but go ahead. Yeah, I know. I, I fucked it up. Uh, I got it was actually funnier. It was funnier being incorrect. That was even, but yeah, go ahead. Okay, so you're saying Burns is war. I'm, I'm trying to think. Was so that the way that he pitched mm -hmm. was worth three and a half wins? Yeah. But was he worth three and a half wins last year on this team? I mean, how many games was like, oh, Corbin's on the mound. We're not getting any hits, and that shit happened. Huh. I don't know that we see this season out and be like, well, we're 87 and 75, but had we had Corbin Burns, we'd have 90 wins. I don't know that that's the case. So I don't, I don't know. I think the pitching staff, like, I'm just not going to worry about it. And I'm going to see what happens. I think like, if you were thinking from an investment strategy. Wow. Wow. Sometimes, like when I play around with Bitcoin or whatever, I look at that shit seven, eight times a day. I'm like, well, what is it this half hour? But if you play around with stocks, you're just like, I'm going to let them meticulate. And wow. Then I'll look back later and see what is it. Mature. Going. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to let the pitching staff mature. Paul, do you have another Brewers question or are we going to move on? We're going to move on. But I just want to say, like, even just like, you, you know, you, you we don't know what DL Hall is going to produce wins above replacement or any other stat. Uh, we don't know what Ortiz is going to do for the infield yet. But even like if you were trading, air quotes, Burns is three and a half war. Reese Hoskins in his most recent season, which was 2022, granted, he was a 2.3 war. You think the Brewers had a 2.3 war first baseman? Like it doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen again. But I mean, it's, I mean, it's, there's other pieces to it, Bart, right? And I think that's part of what you're hinting at. Can I can I point out a Brewers thing before we move on? I just want to get this in before I had to interrupt mid-topic change. Bart, you talked about all the things you think about with the Brewers, right? Reese Hoskins, Yelich, Churi, all this. We don't talk about William Contreras. I forget he's there. Because yeah. when I'm thinking and getting ready for the season, I'm like, well, it's going to depend on how Churio looks and like who's going to win the right field spot. William Contreras... Like Pat Murphy cannot stop talking about this guy. He thinks he's on his way to being the best catcher in baseball. Oh, wow. He's a, this is a super, he is a superstar in the making. Wow. He's already close. His motor, his drive, like the way he interacts with teammates. He has coming into this game, he had 16 spring training at bats. And for reference, Yelich up until today had six. He wants to play every game and he wants to be in every drill. Like uh, we all need to buy William Contreras stock. And I've, and I don't bring him up in my like preseason calculus of trying to figure out. I how forgot. Yeah. It. I didn't mention him. We yeah. all know he's there. It's not that we forget that we have William Contreras a catcher. It's that we like forget mentally like, oh yeah, we have a really good catcher that like counts too. Because for the most part in my life, it's been like Manny Pena and Jason Kendall and Mark Rivera. Yeah. Except for like when Luke Roy was like getting MVP votes for a year or two. But yeah, mm -hmm. buy stock. Everything that's said about William Contreras is that he is like on his way to being a bona fide superstar, which is really exciting. And by the way, I mean, speak like let's just let's just build off of Bart's new uh, passion for the war stat. You know, William Contreras was a five point four war guy last year. Wow! Like, I mean, and and if, and if what Grant is saying and reporting from Pat Murphy is true, and that this is just the beginning, like I I, I wouldn't say I forgot or took for granted what Contreras did or is going to do, but I also you know, maybe it's a good thing. I kind of assumed like, yeah, this is, this is William Contreras. I think like this is William Contreras. If there's another level that he can unlock. Yeah. Like that would be crazy. He wants to be playing every game, every drill. Like for example, Eric Haas is catching today. William Contreras is DHing in a split yeah. squad game. And he played yesterday. Like he hit, so he just yeah. always wants to, and I think it's that yeah. motor. And I even noticed it last year during the season where he was more animated behind the plate and he was fired up after strike. Like he, you could really tell he started to buy into being a brewer. And I think at the catcher position, exactly, which is so central to everyone and everything. I just think that's, 
and we forget about it. We sleep on it. We don't talk about it enough. Well, again, we had mentioned the catchers that were bad defensively that the Brewers can figure out. Like Contreras was, it was like, okay, like that. And but, uh, and so it was like, yeah, like he's going to be, yeah, he's probably a DH with the Braves. He'll, he'll catch for the Brewers, but he'll be probably a net negative defensively. Hit, I mean, all of his advanced metrics last season as the catcher, just strictly defensively, were incredible. Um, last, let, let me just say this. Last quick, maybe pseudo Brewers question. There's more than a 1% chance that Snell or Montgomery become Brewers in the next month. Mm-hmm or mm-mm. More than a 1% chance. Mm-hmm or mm-mm. I think On 1% some... is pretty good. <laughs> okay, you're gonna push on one percent. That's probably I think fun. that number hits it right on the head. Pretty, <laughs> yeah. pretty close. I thought I well, I was gonna say I thought if they were gonna do a like a three year deal with player options after each year deal with Boris, it would have been with Chapman because they could have just done Hoskins on one corner, Chapman on the other, and we'll figure it out again next off season. Yeah, but like I think they don't have a shortage of arms. Oh, you meant Matt Chapman because then I also there's also Aroldis that I that well, was... yeah yeah I I meant I meant Matt Chapman yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, like. They're, they don't have a shortage of arms. They might have a shortage of really high level, high end arms, except for Freddie and maybe. I think Wade it depends. Healthy. I think it depends how much Mark wants to like stick at the council. And, and like obviously, the Brewers weren't going like you know, the, the Zach Wheeler extension shows just how obscene the, the Burns number will likely be. But in this realm of like, you can maybe do like some super heavy one year with BS year two and three type things with a guy like Snell. Like the, the when when Atanasio gets involved with guys that you thought were out of the price range, it's because he's like, oh sure, I'll do a crazy one year deal, right? And all of a sudden it's like, you know, it's gonna be reported as like three years and one hundred million or something. But then it's like it's really a one year deal. And then Snell will you know re-hit the free agency market and he'll make 35 million for his one year with that team. There, if I don't think it's crazy, and you know, I actually think one percent is low. So I would say mm-hmm, more than a one percent chance, but only in the sense of like, this is when a non-Yankees, non-Dodgers, non-Mets team gets involved when it's early mid-March and a big name is still out there, and he's like, okay, sure, like give me a huge, huge, huge one-year deal, um, and then I'll try again next year. Um, okay, that was a lot of brewers. That was great brewers, and and why not? Grant is boots on the ground. Well, we'll go. We got. I'll do. We'll do one more with Grant, um, and then before that, I would like to just remind you. Remind about happyplacehemp.com. Remind. Now that's a starting lineup that you can get behind. The Delta Eights, the THC, um, the CBD CBN. That's the cleanup hitter because it cleans your brain right to sleep. The big acquisition is the seltzer as they've teamed up with 1840 brewing to bring you the <laughs> Grant's bird watching. And it's like, fucking me up. I'm getting a good look at Terang who struck out. So did uh Weimer really, really good back to back at bats there. Keep going. Yeah. Happy The promo code is Bart. As you guys know, 25% off every order. They are in Muskego, but really if you want uh, more info, just go to the website Browse around a little bit. They've got the gummy packs that are uh, in sample form. So I've talked about these, you know, um, the CBD CBNs, which help me sleep. I've talked about whether it's the THC uh, seltzer now or some of the stronger ones. You know, try it. Uh, this is something where it's like fun to try. And then you can decide what you want more of. You can still use the promo code the next time you go. So it's no like, hey, I'll give you a one time, uh, 8%. No, 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 25%. Every time, promo code's BART, happyplacehemp.com. Imig. Grant, do you want, uh, for your final one, you want Bucks or Packers? Man, there's a scenario in which I could get really amped for either or really bummed by. Let's do Bucks. Let's do Bucks. Let's do Bucks. The Bucks are on an impressive winning streak without Chris Middleton. Because of this, you believe they could still win the championship even if Middleton is unavailable or just not playing at his previous level. So again, this has inspired confidence that, hey, Middleton's, a, it'll be great to have him back. But he's not, as I have previously said to the two of you guys, he's not, as being proven 
maybe in the last couple of weeks. He doesn't, they don't need, need, need the previous version of Middleton available or playing at that level to still win the championship. He would be nice to, of course, add, duh, but he's not the difference between winning and not winning the NBA finals. So just to say it again, because of this recent winning streak without Middleton, you believe they could still win the championship, even if he's unavailable or maybe on some significant restriction. Mm-hmm. Or mm-mm. Bart, I'm going to let you go first. I just want to say that halfway through your question, after I immediately selected Bucks, I thought you were about to ask if Middleton should move to the bench, and I was going to say, fuck, never mind. Go, but We're going to do Packers instead. But this is this is good. This, this is, is a good, good one, right? This is a good All one. Right. It, this is great. Go ahead, Bart. Uh, no, I think, like, Middleton's not required to do as much because Dame can score in ways that Drew couldn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there was an, if there's, there could be 20 offensive possessions where Damian Lillard picks up the ball, takes it down the floor, doesn't look at anyone, chucks up a three. And if he's over 20, it's like, do it again. Yeah. But after one or two of those from Drew, I would light my hair on fire, whatever's left of it. I mean, Middleton, they, they do need Middleton. They may not need him against every team. <laughs> Go ahead, make the joke. Go because we're no, I wasn't all trying to. I wasn't trying to. We may not need him forever, <laughs> but we need him right now. They they're gonna need him against Boston. They're gonna need him against Boston. I hate Boston. Uh, I think that people are too poetic about Boston, but even I on the show on Tuesday night was talking to a guy from the Boston Globe and I was and I was saying look I as a Bucks fan I I'm not going to freak out over this they were up 20 and lost to a team that wasn't without some guys it's a regular season but mm -hmm. the Celtics are deep they've got I mean what do, what do you think that you know Tatum should not be the MVP and Derek White should never been the all-star and there's a weird narrative around all that but they are a deep team and they are good and you will need Middleton against them, maybe closer to that version that we had, but um, not, not, not the whole time. So I'm very eager to see Middleton back. I think the thing I'm the most excited about uh, the thing that a lot of people are excited about. And again, we're releasing this before the Bucks play golden state, but this uh, Patrick Beverly, Bordy, Bobby Portis combo. Oh yeah. Fun. Cause John horse, he just, that's what I didn't get. I was talking about this yesterday. John Horst is like, yeah, I'll go, I'll go with this team and a rookie coach. Sure. But then I do think he was like, this team needs something. What if I got Pat Bev here? I do think there was some of that. So uh, I, the answer is, the answer is they need him in varying degrees. But um, I would say if they're going to win a finals this year, there's going to need to be games and possibly series where you do get that level from Chris. Interesting. And that's going to be against Boston. And maybe, you know, whoever gets out of the West, Denver, maybe whoever. Grant, the recent winning streak without Middleton, has you believing they could win the championship even if Middleton's unavailable and or on a significant restriction? Mm-hmm or mm-mm? I don't know if I will confidently say mm-hmm, they could win a title mm -hmm. without Middleton. Number 47. TJ Shook. That's just grooms letting Shook us know what's performing. going up in the uh, going on in the bullpen. I would have to go to the back wall to mute it. I'm all plugged in. I don't want to do that. Um, I'm not going to say mm -hmm. no grooming a little. I'll get, I need a little more there. A little more inflection. Get a little bit more excited about TJ Shook or whoever. He Number is. 47. DJ this team Shook. is more likely to succeed at a high level in the postseason without Middleton than past teams. I don't know what the high end of that is. I think maybe we'll. You know, as Middleton misses more time, we'll learn that, especially this week, as they're playing a lot of really good teams out on the West Coast. That was part of the reason they made this trade, right? Is mm -hmm. because Middleton is getting less reliable. They've been burned by him in the playoffs the last couple of years, not being available. And if Middleton goes down, what creators do you have, right, to step up and 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 to create offense other than Giannis? And with Drew Holiday, it, it just wasn't enough. Drew Holiday at times wasn't enough when Middleton and Giannis were both healthy. Right. Right. So if, if we can't trust Middleton, we need to have a, a viable option, ideally out there with Middleton. But if he's banged up or, or not 100 percent, that was the reason they brought in Dane. Right. So the, yeah. the, I like that. I, I like seeing a trade, the idea of a trade confirmed on a basketball court in front of my eyes. And we're seeing that with Dame, especially as Doc starts to actually run Dame Lillard sets. 
like, oh, what a what a fucking novel idea. Like, take yeah. the Dame Lillard things and put it on a better team with better players. That was that was how this was always supposed to go. That just took a little while longer um, because of the coaching. Well, Bart, uh, like Bart often says this about NFL coaches, but I think it should be mentioned here that like they're just not they're thought of as like these genius guys. Like, oh my goodness, the football coach. But like Doc Rivers, right? Like has been better on basketball his whole life, all these things, but it shouldn't take this tenured former championship winning numbers in the rafters at his alma mater and college guy to come in and be like, hey. You know those sets that Dame ran to such great success on his previous team? We should use those. Oh, <gasps> you're right. Like, no shit. Like, and that's kind of one of those things where, like, you know, like, you know, revisionist history with Adrian Griffin, but where it's like, oh my God, like, what the hell? <laughs> like, that should not, it, that should not have been, it should not have taken until March to uncrack that, that, that riddle, you know? Like, I don't know. That, sorry, I, I interrupted Grant, but like, no, no, no. Uh, Tristan yeah. McKenzie. Two innings, one hit, and two strikeouts. Two innings, one hit, and two strikeouts for McKenzie. I think okay. Grumman has – he's no Bob Kozlowski or, you know, whoever else they have doing voice work at AmFam Field, but he, he could step in in a pinch. Speaking of – I think it's Mark um, Richards. Uh, speaking of succeeding at a high level without your number one or number two guy, I think there's something here with uh, with Grumman that needs to be explored. Also, really quickly, on confirming trades and, like, general manager ideas and plans on the – like, seeing it confirmed, there are some parallels between this year and the title year. Now, the, the coach change is – that's an added link, layer – uh, an added whatever wrinkle yeah. layer yeah uh but adding shaking up the point guard before the season saying eric bledsoe's not good enough let's get drew holiday and then going into this year saying drew holiday's not good enough let's get damian lillard and then adding the fucking nuts guy halfway through the season to come in and like brooke is mild-mannered Giannis, chris these older more accomplished guys bring in the guy to light a fire in to be a little bit of an insane guy. There are a lot of parallels between this year and the title year. There's a lot yeah. of differences too, but the similarities are striking. I think the crazy thing about too, is that it was the Sixers who gave you Pat Bev. Like I know since Embiid's been out, like their expectations for their season have changed obviously. And it's not that like on a one-to-one -one, Pat Bev is like so much better than campaign. Like, Oh my gosh, of course. Like, I mean, they're relatively similar-ish players in the same tier or so, but it's what they contribute that's not like box score. That's mood and attitude and demeanor. And, yeah, it's very, very clear. It doesn't take us to be like, hey, it's kind of like the P.J. Tucker acquisition. But it's nuts that it was the Sixers who said, yeah, yeah, sure, that's fine. Like, if you're a Sixers fan, and, again, I don't know what a Sixers fan's expectations are now in this, you know, Embiid-injured season – but you should be like, what were you thinking? Like, you, you you had to think this guy would provide an emotional spark. You just gifted this to the Bucks. you know? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not losing my mind over Grayson Allen, and I watch him, you know, start eight of eight from three. Like, sometimes he's playing or he's not working on a team, and you move on, and you, I don't know. You can't – like, oh, Pat Beverly was, what, the 10th or 11th guy on the team, and he wasn't playing. And But That's I, just, I think that Milwaukee needs him. Milwaukee yes. needs – when they lost P.J. Tucker, that big deal he signed in Miami, everyone around the Bucks was like, man, we're not paying him that much money. Come on. Right. Like, I remember talking to Justin Garcia about that. He's like, man, that's a, that's a wild contract. The Bucks probably shouldn't do that. And then, like, a year later, we're all like, oh, yeah, this team, like, from a personality standpoint, yeah, you needed P.J. Tucker. Yeah. You needed him. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully Pat Bev can be that same guy. Yep. All right. Well, Grant, you're dismissed. Keep up the good work. Before I go, would you like some uh, unadulterated ballpark audio? I can stick my mic out the window. <laughs> Hold on yeah, here. Yeah. Get a yeah, load of this. Yeah. Yeah. Opening the window now. Mm hmm Changing the mic position. I don't know why this has to be muted. I'd like to hear all this, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yeah, I heard some claps. Well, no, take that off. Oh, Bart, YouTube. Bart, YouTube, Bart, get YouTube out of might get me, yeah. Get out. Get out. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, for having he, me. We'll talk again soon. Those yes, first few seconds, though, that was – that was. there are a few things that are, are baseball, right? That noise, that quiet, like, chatter, like that – 
almost like golf like, but that's unequivocally baseball. Like that is ba- what what you in those first three seconds of your mic out the window was baseball. And man, it sounded good. I want to see if we can get bat to ball before I stop. Ah, he's checking a second. I'm not. The bit is dead. I'm going to drop off and let you guys continue. That was a great bit. Bye, Grant. Well, and Goodbye, so uh, thanks, Grant. So is this. Keep, I'm going to keep, an eye, out. keep the, an eye out. I'm going to wrap up the episode. Uh, keep an eye out, Grant, if you see any like British journalists in your peripheral vision. If I see newsmen, I'll keep an eye out. Or Be well, guys. Talk soon. I don't know what it's like on your. I gotta wrap this up. The internet on me is so bad. You've been mostly good. Though, like when Grant was doing the mic thing, you kind of froze for five seconds. But yeah. all of you froze. Oh, okay, we were good. We kept talking. It 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 kept. Well, going I don't know around. if that. I don't know if that picked up. And now I don't have the editing software on this computer, so I no, gotta it was, leave it was, this all in. No, it was fine. Uh, this I'm is really happening. fucking pissed. You shouldn't. I shouldn't. episode fuck this fuck this fuck 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 all of this i got a good picture i got a good picture of you while you were frozen with your finger up (laughs) good please tweet it i'm fucking pissed bye 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 everyone god fuck piss fuck god